everybody, welcome to DT Week in Review, a show all about stories we reported here at the Daily Torridor throughout the week. Let's start with news. Following up with Michael Cantu's talk about fentanyl last week, the Lubbock County Sheriff's Office has arrested 26-year-old Peyton Wilson. Wilson has been hospitalized after being shot during a fentanyl raid Friday at 2200 Second Place. LPD detectives gathered enough evidence on Wilson to be able granted access to a warrant and able to conduct the house for a raid. Once they raided the house at 1220 on Friday, they found Wilson with a handgun. Once officers fired two rounds at Wilson and he was struck both times. Officials believe they seized fentanyl from the house, but were not sure until lab results come in. The Texas Tech Student Government Association hosted a round table open discussion town hall event on campus diversity from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Wednesday in the Matador Room of the Student Union Building. The event was a part of campus outreach initiative to properly engage students to listen to their thoughts and concerns. Topics range from ethic representation to, and religious freedom to LBGT awareness. The event planned to take place at a later date, but with all the negativity surrounding the election, it was moved up as students would be more concerned about personal freedom. Campus unity is a key concern for SGA, and ensuring tech feels like an accepting, safe place for students to be themselves. Approximately 60% of student body is Caucasian, 20% is Hispanic, and 5% is African American, according to the tech website. Now on to sports. The Texas Tech men's and women's basketball team will both start their season this weekend and are hoping to come out strong. Here to talk more about this upcoming season is sports editor for the Daily Toyador, Brandon Solis. Brandon? Thank you, Ryan. And in good news, the football season's close to an end, which hasn't been spectacular. But hopefully they can get those three wins, but basketball is back in the USA and all around the nation, literally, uh, basketball tips off Friday. For the men's team, tip off at 6.30 p.m. They're coming off a 92-40 to exhibition game win over Missouri Western State on Friday. That was that was a really good game. If you weren't in attendance, you missed some good Texas Tech basketball. But Coach Beard, first-year coach, has said coaches always have something to complain about. So he's going to go in and try to fix those things leading into Friday's regular season matchup. So against Houston Baptist. So it's going to be a good game. Anthony Livingston, graduate transfer senior, hit 17 points from the field. A trio of three-pointers. He had he had a great night. He's, he, uh, he only played 18 minutes, but, like I said, had a great night. Justin Gray, Norris Lodiase, some returners to this Texas Tech Red Raider basketball team, also had a very good impact in the game. The team overall, in a whole, is looking pretty good. Uh, there is some work that needs to be done. They're going more towards the defensive side of the ball, more or less than the shooting side. So it's going to be very interesting to see them go up against teams like West Virginia in the Big 12. Now for the Lady Raiders, dominant win on Sunday. And a by dominant 113-51 to 51, um, is their highest total ever in a game, was surpassed. It was surpassed. 121-56 to 56 over the Lady Mustangs from Midwestern State. Japrice Dean picking back up where she left off her sophomore year. We're also seeing the red shirts from last year actually hit the court. Uh, Laren Brooks or Say Caldwell and uh, Brianna Brewer is a freshman with Grayson Bright coming off the bench. They're a very, very good team it looks like we're going to have for the women's side. So overall, two solid exhibition wins. Hopefully those two teams can bring it into the regular season, into Big 12 play and make some noise and hopefully both teams can reach the tournament this year. And good luck to them, and make sure to go out to the USA on Friday, 6.30 p.m. tip-off, or Sunday at 2 for the Lady Raiders. Once again, I'm Brandon. Thank you. And now, on to La Vida. As basketball season rapidly approaches, the Texas Tech High Riders and Going Band Court Jesters are preparing to bring spirit to the games. The High Riders are a female equivalent of the Saddle Tramps who attend every women's basketball, volleyball, soccer, and softball home game to cheer on women athletes. The High Riders try to coordinate with the Palm Squad and cheerleaders to do the same chants. The Going Band Court Jesters are made up out of a hundred members who play at the basketball games. Band members volunteer to be a part of the group. Andrew Aguirre, a senior member of the Court Jesters, said that the music the band plays at basketball games is a lot different than what they play at football games. He said that the Court Jesters provide the music, but the crowd brings the energy. That story was written by Alyssa Acosta. The Tech Activities Board hosted an election watch party for the Texas Tech students on Tuesday in the Student Union Building. The watch party was meant for all students, despite what candidate they supported, to come out and together and discuss different perspectives in a respectable atmosphere. Students who supported either Trump or Hillary were able to come together and support their candidate while sharing the same space on campus. Before we go on to this week's picks, here's a video recap of Election 2016 by Aaron Graham.
Tuesday, November 8th, students from Texas Tech both attend the Democratic and Republican watch parties. Um, all of us are a part of the Tech College Republicans, so we work directly with the county party and they were throwing this tonight and asked us to join them. Well, this is the Lubbock County Democrat Party. We want it to be amongst Democrats tonight whenever we take the election. Many students are first-time voters in this election. Uh, I voted, and I, the reason I voted is because I believe this election is highly, highly important. I, I know each and every uh, year we get to say, oh, this election is the most important one. But this year you have two strikingly different candidates that are running for this election. I thought it was very important to go out and vote. I voted because I think it's so essential. So many people, women and people of color, have fought so hard for me to be able to have this right. And it takes a lot, and I want to send a message to people around the country that one black young women vote and that the youth voice matters. It's an interesting election to say the least. There's been a lot of um, turbulence between both the candidates and a lot of people are just kind of waiting for the outcome tonight because this is unlike any other election we've had in the history of the United States when it comes to each candidate and when it comes to the party platforms and where they fall into line with the party platforms. Not, especially not normal. Uh, it's just changed a lot. It's a lot about social media and who's like, you know, very, more more popular among you know, everybody else. It's, I don't know, it's, it's very different because a lot of people are now like, you know, invigorated to go and uh, vote actually. So now it's like, you know, we actually becoming a real election like it was in the past. So it's very, it's very different than a normal one. Students also attended the tab watching party in the student union building. So tonight's the election watch party. We're pretty much hosting an event to like bring out more people here on campus, like give them more of a reason to participate in the election. We had free food, kind of just persuading them to come out. Um, I say we have a pretty good turnout. They're actually sitting down watching it, watching what's happening, getting all their results, which I think is really important for them to be active in this election. I sent in an absentee ballot uh, because I, I think it's it's important to support uh, the voting system that we have and and uh, the candidate which I you know chose to support. So I'm Erin Graham with the DT. And now on to this week's picks. This week's column of the week is a piece written by Hannah Dieter titled "Grandparents Are Timeless." The photo of the week is an image captured by Elise Bresler during the Texas Tech versus Texas game this past Saturday. And that's all the time we have for this week's Week in Review. As always, don't forget to pick up today's Thursday package on the court. All the links to these stories can be found in the description of the video. And for all of your campus and local news, check back here to dailytorridor.com. Thank you, Tech, and have a great week.